praise the Lord. I greet you in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. This is your program, Living by the Word. And of course, I'm yours truly, Pastor Ellie Tynes of Destiny Empowerment Global Ministries. It is a privilege to be here again to share the Word of God with you on the topic that we have been doing for the last two or three weeks, which is a life of faith. Because the Bible tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who would diligently seek him. Amen. Just by way of information, of course, our services continue on Sunday mornings on Facebook Live from 9.30 a.m. You can check Destiny Empowerment Global Ministries page at 9.30 or maybe you can get it later on if you have another service amen that you have to attend and be a part of amen hallelujah of course i want to take time out to thank god for pastor um, julian armstrong of christ kingdom assembly we had a tremendous time of ministry on friday amen open for prayer as we could as we were able to make petition and take the needs of many persons amen before the throne of grace and of course thanking god even now that he is a prayer answering God so father we bless your people we thank you for them we declare them blessed and this word father will do what you need for it to do in their lives in Jesus name amen amen I have been talking to you about a life of faith and the Bible is clear in many scriptures in fact four scriptures in the Bible Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 um, Galatians chapter 3 verse 11 Romans chapter 1 verse 17 and Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38 all tell us that the just must live by faith those of us who have come into right relationship with Jesus Christ or with God through his son Jesus Christ those of us who are the righteousness of God in Christ we must live by a confident trust dependence reliance on god amen last week we were talking about abraham hallelujah we were talking about the faith of abraham when god told abraham to leave where he was and to go to a place that he will show him abraham left my God, not even knowing where he was going, but trusting God that if God has spoken to him and given him an instruction to leave, then God will take care of him. I'm saying to you this, this day, whenever you're looking at us, when God gives an instruction, sometimes it does not make sense. But that is the life of faith. Faith has very little to do with feelings. Amen. Feelings have very little to do with faith. My God. You can have all kinds of feelings about situation, but that does not amount, that does not do anything to faith. Amen. Faith is, is a conviction you have, my God, based on, I would say, information, based on revelation of who God is and what God has said he's going to do. And in spite of how you feel, yes, God, you hold on to the promises. You hold on to the word of God. That is what we are talking about today. And we continue looking at faith and looking at the life of Abraham in Hebrews chapter 11. Because the Bible tells us, amen, in verse 17 of Hebrews 11, 17 to 19, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, come on, somebody said tried. Because I'm saying to you, your faith must be tried. Your faith will be tried. Abraham's faith was tried. Amen. He, he was tried. He offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises <clears throat> offered up his only begotten son of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. He was tried, I'm saying to you, if we are living by faith, there will be a time when that faith will be tried. The word tried there speaks of tested. The word there speaks of a testing that will prove whether it is genuine or not. That is what has to happen. 
as we seek to live a life of faith, God will allow situations to come or God may bring a situation to test you. To try us to see if the faith we profess to have, if that faith is genuine or not. That is what God did to Abraham when God came to him to offer up his only begotten his son. Amen. And hear what the Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 7. He says the trying or trial my God, or proving of the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. The trying or proving of the genuineness of our faith. It means, therefore, that some of the faith we have is not genuine faith. My God. It means that sometimes the faith we think we have is only sufficing when good things are happening. And the faith we have when trouble comes, difficulty comes, hardship comes, cannot stand the test of time to prove whether or not it's genuine. And what Peter was saying to them, basically, we value gold. And gold, as much as it is valuable with the passing of time and all of that, gold will wear away. Amen. Gold will not last forever. And still men try gold. My God, to make sure they remove all impurities and to test the quality of the gold. And he says, how much more our faith, how much more our faith in this eternal God need to be tried as well to see how genuine it is. The situations that God will allow us to go through, we say we trust God. My God. We say we believe in God. Let trouble come. Let's see how much we believe God. Let problem come. Let's see how much we really have faith in God. Let God do like how he allowed Job to, to go through and touch our family or touch our possession. And let's see the genuineness of the faith we say we have in God. My God. Hallelujah. Abraham's faith was tested. Let's turn to Genesis chapter 22. And let's look at the story because the time goes so quickly. Amen. The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 22, it says, And it came to pass after these things <clears throat> that God did tempt. And the word is the King James Version tempt, but it is testing. It's the same idea to, to prove the genuineness of Abraham's faith. Amen. God did tempt Abraham <clears throat> and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. I like Abraham's response as though ready and waiting for God's instruction. God, here I am. What are you going to say to me next? I'm ready to receive instruction from you. That should be our approach when God begins to speak to us. Here I am, God. Hallelujah. And God said to him, verse 2, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, <laughs> And get you into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell you of. Now just imagine that. God <laughs> promised Abraham this son. My God, at age 75, Abraham went ahead and with Sarah's intervention, they got Ishmael. And then God, of course, had to say that that is not the son of promise. That is not the covenant son that I agreed that you are going to have. The covenant son, Abraham, is with your wife, Sarah. And eventually at age 100, he gets his promised son, Isaac. And now it's telling us about age 30, 33, thereabout, according to the literature. God is now coming to him and say, hey, the son that I promised you, that through, through your seed, all nations of the earth are going to be blessed and all of that. The son I promise you, take him now. This only son you have. Because God was not considering Ishmael. Ishmael was not the son of the, of, 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 of the legal covenant that God had made with Abraham. So God was not considering Ishmael. Amen. His first son. 
because God was making covenant. I'm saying to you, God is a covenant keeping God. And though sometimes we try to get involved to help God, it is not going to turn God from what he has spoken and what he has decreed. We cannot do that. So he says, take your only son. Just imagine that. God is not saying to him, take an animal or take a servant or take something else. Even your own life, Abraham. God is saying, take your son, my God. And it goes on to say, now your only son. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, if there were many other sons of covenant that God, Abraham, might not have thought it so bad. Hallelujah. You know, it, it is bad enough that if you have many children, that you have to give up or sacrifice one. But when you only have that one son, God says, I want the one son, your only son. Um, and not just your only son, but he goes on to add, as it were, injury to it. He says, the only son, the son you love. And God called him. Amen. He says in verse 2, your only son whom you love, your son Isaac. So in case Abraham wasn't sure, who God was talking about. God make it very plain. God says, I'm telling you, take your son, your only son, the son you love, Isaac, and go to Mount Moriah and go sacrifice your son. Now, I, I, I mean, this is strange. <laughs> Amen. This is strange. My God, because the, the, the research is saying that in the Old Testament time, the people of Canaan, they would sacrifice their sons to their pagan gods. So it's sacrificing children was not necessarily something strange, but it's not something that the Hebrew God will have them to do. And he comes to Abraham and he says, Abraham, I want you now to take your only son, the son that I promise you, and go and sacrifice this son. He says, for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell you of. My God. The Bible never records how Abraham feels. Never records what he, what he was thinking as he processed this thing. Never, never recorded how he felt hearing those words on that, on that day. Never tells us. My God, he doesn't answer back God. He doesn't query with God. I'm saying sometimes as you walk by faith, God will give you some strange instructions that does not necessarily make sense to the human understanding. He says, take your only son. And Abraham, verse 3, rose up early in the morning, saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, <coughs> And clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God told him. Now, that is obedience. There's no discussion. There is no delay. There is no consultation. There is no procrastination. There is nothing recorded for us to say, well, he was, he was thinking about it and he changed his mind and, and none of that. They tell us that he would have gotten to that place in three days journey. My God. On the third day, he got to Mount Moriah. So he told us that for three days, Abraham is carrying this instruction that God has given to him. It doesn't talk about how it may be breaking his heart. Oh my God. Oh, he may have contemplated not going. Oh, maybe he's looking at his son and thinking, I have to kill my son. And the kind of offering, this burnt offering, was one where you had to first kill the, the, the victim. You had to kill the victim. When they did burnt offering, they would kill the animal at the entrance of the tabernacle. They would take the blood, drain the blood, and now they would, the priest would sprinkle the blood by the altar and will cut up this animal in pieces and will burn those pieces on the altar and that smoke will go up to heaven. So God is saying now at your own hand, the son that I've given you, you now take this son at your own hand and sacrifice him. And Abraham gets up early in the morning. Maybe he didn't sleep the night before. We don't know. It does not tell us. 
But in obedience to what God has said, he saddles his ass. He takes the wood. He is going with Isaac. We have no idea how mommy feels. Amen. <laughs> and of course, it's a good thing he doesn't record it. Because I can't imagine a mother that the father's going to come and say, Hey, God tell me, let me go sacrifice our son. She would say, No way. <laughs> she would say, No way. Not my son. Check if God is really talking to you or if it's the devil. But Abraham went. He got to the place, my God, where God had instructed him. Verse 4 says that on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes. He saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, verse 5, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Look at the words Abraham using. He says, stay here. My God, there are some things that you have to do. There are some assignments that God will give you. You can't carry everybody with you. They can only go so far. My God, imagine if the servants had gone with him and see him. My God, raise that knife to end his son's life. What the servant's response would have been. There are some things God instructing you to do. There are people you cannot take with you. <laughs> you can only bring them so far and then you're going to leave them you're going to leave them a little way off I don't want to say where the ass is you're going to leave them because they cannot go the distance yes God with you there are some, there are some things you have to do people cannot go the distance you, you have to go so far with them and leave them my God, and I like what he says. He says, I'm going now to worship me and the lad. We are going to prostrate ourselves. We're going to reverence God. And not just that, they're going to reverence God. He said, we're coming back. I do not know what was in Abraham's mind. Amen. He says, we are going, but we are coming back. My God, because then Hebrews tells us that he was confident he had this, this assurance that God was not going to allow the, the death of his son to be a final thing. He had the assurance that even though he was going to sacrifice his son, he says, I know that God was able to raise him up again. That is the kind of faith. That is the kind of assurance somehow Abraham had. And the thing about it is saying that there was no reference point to say, well, okay, Abraham saw other resurrections in the past. There was nothing. But there was this conviction that the God whom he served, my God, hey, who had given him the promise that he was going to multiply his seed like the stars of the heaven, like the sands, that this God who gave him this promise will fulfill what he had spoken one way or the other and even death was not going to rob him of that he said we're going to worship we're coming back what confidence and I like that verse 6 says and Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering laid it upon Isaac his son and he took the fire in his hand and a knife and they both of them and they went both of them together that is something we see as well with Isaac. Isaac was not putting up a fight. My God. If he's about 30 years old, as they said, and Abraham is over 100 years old, he can try to escape. He can try to run. But something was happening in that moment that even Isaac was submissive to what the father was doing. And yes, he had a question. But there was no rebellion. There was no running away. There was no opposition to the father. Uh, Isaac verse 7 says, Spoke unto Abraham his father and said, My father, he said, Here am I my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Isaac now gets concerned. He said, Daddy, we have the wood. We have the fire. If we are going to make a sacrifice, where is the lamb? My God, I thank God that today we know exactly who the lamb is. That the lamb of God was slain before the foundations of the world. We know who he is. His name is Jesus. John saw him in John chapter 1 verse 29. He says, behold, 
the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sin of the world. Behold, this Jesus. He says, where is the Lamb? My God. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they both went together. Both of them went together. They said, God will provide himself a lamb. Isn't that prophetic? Isn't that awesome? Aren't you glad that God provide himself a lamb? <laughs> A spotless lamb. Aren't you glad that this lamb, my God, has been sacrificed for the sin of the world and for your sin and my sin. The perfect sacrifice so we can be restored to God. Aren't you glad today that God has provided himself a, a lamb? And hear what he says in verse 9. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Verse 10. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Abraham was serious. Abraham was fully committed to obeying God. My God, when you live a life of faith, we must be fully committed to obeying God. Abraham did not pull back. My God, Abraham did not waver. Abraham could have forgotten the knife. But there he was, ready to obey what God had instructed him right to the fullest. My God. Verse 11, And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said again, Here am I. As if to say, God, well, what's the instruction now? The last one you gave me, I am ready to fully obey it. What is it you'd have me to do now? Verse 12, and he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing thou hast not withheld your son, thine only son from me. Oh my God. God wanted to prove him. God did not want him to end his son's life. God was testing him. God was proving to see if this faith, when it is tried, that it would be approved, that he will hear well done, that it will meet to the praise and honor and glory of God. He said, that's what I wanted to see, you know, Abraham. My God, even when he left home to go to Mount Moriah, God could have said, yes, Abraham, I know you're going to obey me. So don't bother go. Even when he's tying him up, God could have said, Abraham, don't bother, I know you fail. But he waited, my God, to see Abraham go the full distance with that knife. And then he says, okay, I know you fear God. I'm saying to us, do we fear God? My God, how far are we willing to go to obey the instructions that God has given to us? No matter how foolish sometimes they may seem. And I'm not saying that God is telling you now to go sacrifice your child and all of that. But I'm saying, what extent are we willing to go to show that we fear God? To show that we reverence God? And he told him, don't do that. In fact, he says to him now, put, he says verse 13. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. As it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. My God, hallelujah. Hey, <laughs> hallelujah. It is only as he obeyed fully. As he went the full distance with God and proved that his faith was genuine. He says, then we could see that God indeed, we will see the provision of God. Hallelujah. If he did not go the distance, he would not have been able to experience God as Jehovah Jireh. We would not have been able to see that God is able to provide. My God, he would not have been able to prove his God that he's able to take care of his needs. He says, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. What shall be seen? That God is able to provide. That he is my Jehovah Jireh. As I, as I am proven in my faith, then it is. I see another, another element of God's character. I see another facet of who this I am God is. I experience God in a new way and a new dimension as I obey and walk in faith. There are things about God you will not see until you fully obey. 
Let me say that again. There are things, there are dimensions of God that we will never experience unless we walk by faith and walk in obedience. My God, it means that there are dimensions in God that he wants to make known to us. But it means that we got to walk by faith. we got to trust God sometimes even when those situations seem illogical. It does not seem practical. It does not seem reasonable. But in the mount of the Lord, if you obey, you will see the hand of God. You know, the time is gone, but I remember God telling me to leave my job and go and study. And I had no steady income. But I can tell you today that looking back, I have seen that in the mount of the Lord, my God, he provided, he kept, amen. He kept me for those three years going to school. Had I not stepped out in faith and left my job, I would never have known my God as my Jehovah Jireh. And maybe you are today listening to this message. And again, God is challenging you to step out, challenging you to walk in obedience. But it is that you want to see before you step out. No, it's only after you step out. You're going to experience what God is able to do in that situation for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, thank you for your people today. We bless them, Father. We thank you, God, that those who have heard your voice and know it is your voice will walk in obedience. Those who right now are still timid, God, let this message inspire, strengthen, build their faith to know that, God, as they trust you and step out, you are able to provide. As they trust you on their mountain experience, God, it will be seen that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above even all that they can ask or think in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, of course, this is all the time we have for living by the word. I want to encourage you to learn the word, love the word, live the word. Till next time, stay strong. God bless you. Bye-bye.